What's up guys? Recently, I just landed in in Vancouver and I wanted to make a video documenting how I actually travel business class for free as an entrepreneur. So typically before this year, I fly economy for Air Canada or Cathay Pacific when it comes to traveling back and forth between Vancouver and Hong Kong. But recently, I'm able to save up enough points to actually travel business class which I'll explain how in this video. So for my trip from Hong Kong to Vancouver, it took 70,000 points for Asia miles, excluding taxes and surcharges. So yes, I did pay a little bit of taxes, which is approximately 100 bucks US, but it's really nothing compared to the cost of a business class. As of right now, my Asia mile account has over 330,000 points. So I wanted to share how I got there, what are the systems and processes I need to put in place as an entrepreneur in order to get to that level of points in a relatively short amount of time. So first, let's talk about the flight. When you're looking at Asia Mile Rewards Program, you'll find that the long haul flight is approximately 70,000 points for business class one way and 30,000 points for economy class one way as well. So if you fly both ways, just tick the number and times it by two. Right now on average, I'm earning approximately 70,000 points per month, which means I can actually fly back and forth between Hong Kong and Vancouver every two months for the rest of the year. Now, this strategy is perfect for you if you're planning to be a digital nomad or you plan to fly between different locations in Europe or within Asia. So then you can travel after you retire or because you have remote work going forward after COVID pandemic. There are basically three conditions you need in order to make this work. So first, you need to have a lot of online expenses. Now, as an entrepreneur, most of my expenses are actually paid through credit card. And this is important when I explain the rewards program. And my advertising is online, my software subscription business expenses online, and I try to get all of my expenses to go through one single credit card as much as possible. So this basically consolidates all of my expenses through one channel. So I maximize the rewards program. Some of the other things I did to basically put the expenses through my credit card is really my transportation expense where I use something called an Octopus card in Hong Kong. In Canada, this is like Compass card or in UK is the Oyster card, so on and so forth. And the automatic recharge is actually done through credit card. So it's actually very convenient and it just goes through when I'm below a certain level of balance. And back when I was running an e-commerce business, I was actually buying inventory from China using credit card as well. If you are running an e-commerce business, then chances are you will realize that a lot of suppliers do not accept credit card, but then you might be able to negotiate with them and get them to accept payments through PayPal, which is also allowing you to use credit card to buy inventory. And the points you accumulate over time as an entrepreneur will really help out when it comes to traveling. The second thing you need in order to make it work is really consolidating all of your expenses in one single credit card. Now, personally, I'm not a big fan of credit card. I'm not a big fan of borrowing um, other than when it comes to investing. I had two credit cards to date. That's it. I have one in each country, one in Hong Kong, one in Canada. And what I did was I actually consolidate all of my expenses onto one credit card regardless of where I go. In this case, it's kind of a special credit card because when I spend money in a foreign currency, usually your credit card will charge you extra like a foreign exchange transfer fee or something like that. The card I got was an Asia mile standard chartered credit card, which allows you to have foreign exchange transactions at the spot rate, which means it will just take whatever the rate it is as of that time and will not charge you an additional fee for it. If you have ever bought something from the US in Canada, or if you have bought something from Europe to US, then you will realize that some credit cards will actually charge you that fee, which can be quite hefty over time. So you need a foreign exchange credit card, which saves you that fee.
third thing you need is really the good old rewards program. And there are a lot of rewards program out there. And basically what you're looking for, it's a rewards program that is partnered with your favorite airline. Now in this case, my favorite airline is Cathay Pacific. They have Asia Miles, which is the points program. So in US, I know it's different. In Canada, it might be Aeroplan. And you want to find a credit card that is tailored towards the Asia Mile or the points program you're using. So you usually get a better rate when it comes to earning points. And I can demonstrate what I mean when I was scouting for my credit card, which is the Asia Mile Standard Chartered Credit Card. And at that point, there are two very popular credit cards in Hong Kong. One is the Asia Mile one, and the other one is actually the HSBC Rewards Points program. They both offer some degree of points earning. So for Asia Miles, obviously, is tailored just towards flights. And for HSBC, you can use it as cash back as well. And you can also use it for restaurants and so on and so forth. But when you try to do the conversion and I actually did the math, using the HSBC credit card, I end up earning less points than the Asia Mile one. Depending on what kind of transactions I have with the Asia Mile card, like for example, online expenses, I actually earn two times or even three times the point for specific transactions. Now, obviously, I don't keep track of exactly what type of transactions I have. I just focus on consolidating my expenses. So after doing the math, then I find that Asia Miles standard charter credit card is better than the HSBC one. So that's what I ended up with. So as of right now, on average, I'm earning around 70,000 points per month, which can be quite useful when it comes to traveling after COVID is over within the next six to 12 months, hopefully. And I just want to give you a few additional tips when it comes to using your credit card for points. Now, depending on your travel program, you can actually redeem your points for yourself and other people as well. And within the points program I'm currently using, I can redeem points for other relatives slash family members up to five people. So use those slots wisely. If you have a wife and you have kids, then probably those are going to be the names you put in there. But I also put in a couple of family relatives as well. So to help them out when it comes to traveling and buying plane tickets. And the second tip is really to check when your points are expiring. Sometimes when you earn the points, you have around a year or two years before they expire. So make sure you use it before then. And this is also one of the motivations on why I want to use a business class flight this time during the pandemic, because I have all these points accumulated for the last six to 12 months and I couldn't use it because I can't travel. Now, the third tip is really when you are looking at the points program, you want to see what kind of alliance or partnerships the airline has with other airlines. And in terms of Cathay, right now they have a partnership with Air Canada, Alaska Airline, and other American and European airlines as well, like Finland Air. So that actually allows you to use your points that was previously limited to only Cathay Pacific, but now to other airlines like Air Canada, JL, American Airlines, so on and so forth. So then you can fly in different countries as well. So that's it for this episode where I talk about the personal finance aspect of how I earn points and fly business class for free as an entrepreneur. So if you like this kind of video, then tap the like button and this will tell the YouTube algorithm that this is a video you like, so I'll make more in the future. So that wraps up this episode when I talk about flying business class for free. And I just want to celebrate two successful case studies where Mike made 73.8% from AIG in 4.5 months in investing accelerator. And he also made 33.8% from tech resources in 3.5 months. So that is fantastic. And he also exited one third of his LHX for 30% gain in four months. The next case study is Fionn, where she sold CAE for 70% gain in four months and also Alta for 50% return in five months as well. So congratulations to both Mike and Fionn. So these are fantastic case studies.